Okay, so let us do the next problem. Okay, uh, from the easy paper, uh, TRB Polytechnic 2021 easy paper. Yes, this is from electric circuits. Two port networks. What is given when two two port networks are connected in series and represent represented as a single two port network. That means the whole network is given by another two port network means the parameters of the network are obtained by adding the individual watt. Okay, so first understand a two port network. Say for example, I have a two port network like this. That's a two port network, one minute. So I have another two port, anyway, two inputs. Input port having two terminals. Output port having two terminals. Any network, two port network, the input port voltage V1 and its current I1. Feel like exciting the input port and also feel like exciting the output port. So plus minus. So this is the current I2. Yes, that's a written current. Similarly, that's a written current. Okay, that's your two port network. So now he said two such two port networks. Okay, so now let me take this as V1 and then let me consider another two port network identical to this. But let me say and the inputs are, say for example, it is V3 and the current is I3, for example. And then this is, say for example, V4 and the potential uh, difference is this, yes. Then the current is I4. Let's just obey what he said. It's a two port network. This is a two port network. Yes, now just obey what he said. It's one mark, very easy problem, very easy problem. So you have to connect the two two port networks in series. In series means they have to send the same current. That means, okay, you have to connect them in series aiding or series supposition. So by default, we go for series aiding only means. So then connect these two. If you connect these two, then I3 is going to become I1. Then both are same, same currents. Okay, so then we can say it is series. Then take the wire here, then take another wire. What's the current here? It's your I1. And what is this current? I1. Okay, I3, that is going to serve as I1. Okay. And then call this potential as a Vx. Okay, that's a whole input potential. Okay, just obeying. I'm just obeying what he said. Okay, so I'm connecting two two port networks in series. That means they should have, when you connect two elements in series, they have to send same currents. Okay, so obey that basic law of electrical circuits. Okay. <clears throat> then similarly you need to connect the output ports also in series so this is a current in and there's a current out again make this current output connected here you feel clear now okay so the i2 is coming in as your i4 therefore i2 i4 is equal to what i2 okay we can call this current as ix okay this is vx ix we can call this as ix so that means this is going to become ix and similarly, you can call this current as your current IY, for example. Okay, IY is equal to this current. Okay, I'm considering two ports. One is a X port, another one is a Y port. Okay, so this is my VY. I can say this is plus minus. Okay, so I'm just obeying what he said. That's all. Okay, so there's a current IY. So there's also IY, and there's also IY. So in Y port, IY is the current leaving, IY is the returning current. In the export, IX is a current in, IX is a current coming out. Okay, so it's well balanced. Okay, so this is one port, this is another port, and just uh, see the read the statement and confirm we realized uh, what he said. Okay, when two two port networks are connected in series and represented as a single two port network, so the whole is represented as a single two port network. Okay. So we can feel the whole as a two port network, this whole as another two port network. Yes. That's a new two port network by combining this two. Okay. 
ho what is your the parameters of the network are obtained by adding the individual parameter so this is going to have some parameter this is going to have some parameter means you can add them means that's possible it should be a z parameter matrix it must be a z parameter matrix so you can take this as z1 and this is z2 okay so then that net z okay of this two port network due to the addition will be as per the fundamental we can say it is is it of the combined two port network is equal to simply add the matrix of z1 add the matrix of z2 so then you will get this is a matrix okay yes so option is it's possible only in impedance matrices okay impedance matrices exactly speaking okay so you should have this as impedance matrix this is the impedance network this also the impedance network then the resultant network is also an impedance network so the answer is it is going to be a z parameter matrix okay that's the right choice you think what will happen if it is abcd if you uh, in that abcd you should not connect them in series you have to connect them in uh, cascade okay right then some result will be there like that you might have made many conclusions for the two port networks is exploiting if it is a y parameter then you have to put them in parallel then you will get the result if it is a y parameter so you put two networks in parallel then that will result in y1 parameter of the first y parameter network and second parameter network like that okay so series impedance and parallel it's admittance okay so like that if you cascade that's a multiplication that is going to be for the abcd matrix so it is going to be one abcd in cascade with another abcd so there it is going to be uh, multiplied okay for the net abcd okay yes that is exploiting this fundamental of two port networks that's a good problem easy just you need to imagine and straight away go for the solution okay so then let us get into the next problem yes this is another interesting uh, one mark from circuits again the transfer function of multiple dependent sources can easily be obtained by the transfer function of multiple dependent sources multiple independent sources i'm sorry multiple independent sources can easily be obtained by okay so we have multiple independent sources so we are going for the transfer function so how to connect it very simple example let me take so i have a resistor that's linear resistor i'm exiting it by an ac source exiting it by a dc source combined okay so this may be a 10 volt dc source i can call it as a vdc and this is vac okay so they have unique frequencies so let me put plus minus for this also let vac is equal to 10 sine omega t where omega let me say some frequency let me say it's 100 pi radian per seconds okay now the transfer function means i need to connect okay so this is uh, for example let me say vdc going to make uh, for example a laplace for vdc v1 of s laplace of vac assume it is v2 of s i have two sources v1 and v2 assume i am going for the current response i of s so then i of s is the transfer function i'm looking for with respect to the two independent sources two independent sources okay so ac source and dc sources are independent sources so now i'm going for a transfer function so how v2 uh, gives a current and how v1 gives current so that means you can find v1's contribution in your i you can find v2's contributions in i so with v1 you can find the response i1 with v2 you can find the response i2 then by superposition we can go for the response i of s as what i1 of s plus i2 of s okay so formally i can say i of s is equal to i1 of s is i1 of s is your current okay with respect to what your v1 okay that's a current due to v1 and here it is the current due to only v1 alone active v2 is made zero here v1 is made zero v2 alone active okay so then we can get your response i of s okay so we can say i of s is nothing but i of s due to v1 of s alone provided v2 zero plus you can say second component i of s divided by what v2 of s okay provided v1 equal to zero so this is what exactly is pointing hope you understand the statement yes you should feel like 
a transfer function connecting the two. Okay. Yes. Now you feel. So I as a function of V1, I'm calling it as I1. Okay. So that's I1 first response, second response, I2. I1 due to V1, I2 due to V2. Then if you add, okay, so this is possible. This is possible. Yes. Yes, this is possible only when the system is what? Linear. Yes, you need to assume it's anyway, it's a linear resistor. But this we can easily connect. Okay. So a simple example. So having two independent sources and connecting to a function called i. So how the v2 transferred to i and how v1 getting transferred to i. Okay. So that's possible only with the help of yes. You are free to conclude this now. It's very easy. Okay. It's possible only with the principle of superposition, principle of linearity. Okay, that's simple problem. So the point is this, whenever we have more than one independent sources, always enable them one by one, get the responses one by one and add them. Okay. So he's indirectly saying this. Okay. That's what the superposition obeys. The system obeys if it is linear. And point to be noted here. So only a linear system will obey the principle of superposition. If the system is non-linear, never think of applying superposition. Next problem, this one from controls. Okay, yes. Yes, what's given is loop transfer function is given. G of S, H of S is given. So what I have, I have a closed loop control system. The moment, when he is talking about the control system, by default, go for the closed loop structure. Unless in other ways, it is mentioned as open loop. Since he said G and H means, yes, it should be a closed loop control system. So we have a forward path, G of S, and feedback path, H of S. So he is having that uh, K, so that belong to G of S, okay? So it is, he said G of S, H of S, okay? That is our loop transfer function L of S, we can say. So L of S is a loop transfer function, product of forward path and feedback path. So what's our control system transfer function? This is C of S and this is R of S. The transfer function is C of S by R of S. Okay, that is equal to G of S by 1 plus G of S, H of S. So the focus is on the denominator. The denominator polynomial is known as characteristic equation. Roots of our characteristic equation, nothing but our closed loop poles. Roots of characteristic equation, nothing but our closed loop poles only. Okay. So when you want to comment on stability, we need to comment only with respect to the closed loop poles, not with respect to the open loop poles. Then problem is, so the closed loop poles locus as K varies by default, okay, whether it is mentioned or not, by default, go for positive K variation from zero to infinity. So we consider negative feedback by default, even though not mentioned, we always take a negative feedback closed loop control system with the K parameter, the gain parameter of the loop transfer function varying from zero to infinity, how the roots are moving in S plane, how the closed loop poles are moving in S plane, because we have a condition for a system to be stable and always the pole should be on the LHS of the J omega axis, left hand side of left hand side of the S plane, we can see. Okay, so this is your real and this is your J imaginary. Okay, this is your negative real and this is your negative J imaginary, that's your S plane. So in the S plane, if all the poles are on left hand side, then the system is said to be stable. What poles I'm talking about is only the closed loop poles. Okay, we have a technique for that. That's what exactly the root loci technique that is going to give you the locus of individual roots. Okay, locus of individual roots. Okay, so loci of multiple roots. So we call it as by the name roots loci. Roots loci is a better way roots low c okay more than one roots okay if it is first order denominator so we are going to make one plus g of s h of s equal to zero that is your characteristic equation so the characteristic equation is one plus g of s h of s is equal to zero okay so this characteristic equation roots are nothing but our closed loop poles how they move as k varies from zero to infinity that's what giving us root low c yes how to imagine such a root low c and you may remember a basic fundamental number of roots low z 
otherwise starting points of the root clause c is always k equal to zero so you form on plus g of s h of s equal to zero then you get how many roots for this so many roots clause e will get so form the characteristic equation on plus g of s h of s is equal to zero will give you what okay we'll take it to the next slide on minute So from this itself, you can conclude the number of roots low z for this given loop transfer function. Okay, so one can straight away say the answer by seeing the number of denominator poles of the loop, denominator roots of the loop transfer function. That's one way. But formally, this is the way: one plus g of s h of s equal to zero. So then you end up with one plus k into what do you get? S plus one. That's a zero, open loop zero divided by s into s plus two into s plus three is equal to zero. So as a result, you will end up with s into s plus two plus sorry into s plus three into sorry plus k into s plus one equal to zero. Now set k equal to zero, that will give where the roots low z are commencing. Okay, s equal to zero is one locus. It's commencing here. S equal to minus two another locus. S equal to minus three another locus. But if you go by this straight away, by experience, okay, just mark the poles and zeros of your loop transfer function. Where the poles zero, minus two, minus three, and zero at minus one. So we have pole at zero, pole at minus two, pole at minus three. So we have a zero at minus one, zero, minus two, minus three. Okay, yes. How many roots low z you will get for the given problem? So, if you remember, number of roots low z is equal to number of poles, open loop poles. It is okay. Open loop finite poles. So, we other one is one way. Another root is how many roots you are getting? So, three roots when k equal to zero, all the starting points. Okay, then just imagine. But you need not to go beyond this problem. But for the fundamental sake, how the root low z will be? For this, the two roots will meet. Okay, each other. And because of the zero, it will get attracted. And because of this pole, it will get repelled. Okay, the root loss will be like this. So this will be the root loss. See, this will help you if any other problem is made based on this. That's how you get. That's root locus number one, root locus number two, and root locus number three. That's imagination of your roots loss by the fundamental of root locus concept or roots loss concept, where k strictly varies from zero to Infinity that is applicable now. What we are doing it for strictly negative feedback, and things will change if k takes negative, or feedback becomes positive. Okay, you won't get such a root loss e. And whatever uh, the habit we have for the root loss e, strictly for the condition negative feedback, positive values of k. Remember that. Yes, with this, uh, let me conclude this video. So we'll uh, meet in one more video with a uh, few more okay DRB problems. Okay, thanks for watching. So any doubts? Any doubts? You can post on the YouTube itself. Okay. So even if you if you need more clarity, yes. Okay. You can. You are free to uh, suggest. Okay. So we try to improve further. Thank you. Thank you for watching.